Hello, I'm Alexandra Joy Warren, founding artistic director of Joy Movement. And this is our workshop today on dramaturgy and dance. And I would like to introduce my colleague here. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Alyssa Noble, and I've been working with Alex uh, as the dramaturg for this project. Um, I am based in Durham, North Carolina, and I'm a choreographer, uh, sometimes dance writer, but more often dr dance dramaturg. Awesome. And just so you know, we're here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and we are in Carolyn's Garden at LeBauer Park, um, where I am currently an artist in resident for the first time um, launching this new program. So we're really excited today to talk about um, how we've discovered <laughs> how useful dramaturgy and dance, um, how they work together, and how we've been working together on this project that we've been doing. Um, yeah, so want to jump right into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Okay, <laughs> so um, I guess I'll ask you first. Um, so Alyssa, tell us a little bit about what your definition of dramaturgy is, because I know a lot of people have maybe heard the word, it's becoming more. Um, it's becoming more and more popular in dance. But how? Um, what does it mean? And like, what is your relationship to it? Yeah. Um, so for me, I feel like a dramaturg is somebody that just supports the dance artist or the whoever is not even necessarily dance artist, like performance artist or whoever um, is sort of heading up the project. Um, yeah, it's a supportive role. I think it's somebody who helps to brainstorm, helps to like, um, you know, w work through different ideas in process and talk about um, context, whether that's with relationship to sort of research that's related to the project or just external context or just offering feedback of this is something that that makes me think of. This is something that's a related thread maybe. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's just a useful, um, it's just somebody who's a tool really. Um, and yeah, can, can help sort of flesh out ideas and also give feedback on the choreographic process when that, uh, becomes, when it, when it gets to that stage. So just sort of, um, yeah, sounding board. Um, my personal relationship to dramaturgy is I, have um, a background as a dance writer. And so I got into that. I got into dance criticism mostly as um, an undergrad in college at the University of Illinois and started writing about dance kind of as a way to see dance for free. Um, because yeah. as a critic, you get a press pass. And it was just a great way for me to um, see a lot of dance and think about it critically and yeah, get my thoughts out on paper. Um, and it's been interesting over time. I've gotten really interested in giving feedback to choreographers for like works in progress. Um, and I see those skills as being very related just because they're, it's, it's those, um, it's the two things of like, how do you talk about what you're seeing, what themes are jumping out at you, but also having the background knowledge of being a dancer myself and saying like, I understand how to talk about movement more specifically, or I can pull out, um, I, I have a, a sense of like how movement gets built or how phrases get built. Um, so I think it helps me give feedback in a way that's more specific yeah. Um, yeah. and more targeted. Um, yeah, and hopefully helpful. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> nice. You know, I'm glad you mentioned about your experience. This is a tangent, and this yeah. is usually how we work, right? We talk a lot because <laughs> it's fun. But um, I used to write a little bit as well when I was a grad student. Uh -huh. um, I only became interested in dance criticism because <laughs> every time um, there was a review, it felt like they didn't know any kind of, like, concept of where dance was coming from or what the choreographer was intending and I was getting frustrated every time I would read so I decided to join the paper <laughs> yeah no I feel that I, I definitely feel that way like when I create work 
any time it gets reviewed, like even if the writer is like super uh, dialed in and like knows what they're talking about, I'm still like, yeah, but you didn't get the nuance. Like you didn't get like all these, you know, whatever. Yeah, anyway, no. so I get it. Yeah, no, it's true. But um, but yeah, I would say for me, um, I as a choreographer, um, I just kept he hearing this word, um, dramaturgy, and I would see other folks using dramaturge in their work, dramaturgs in their work, and I was like, you know, what is that? I don't really know, but it feels like, I just had an instinct that it felt like it's something that needed to be a part of this project. Yeah. I started thinking about this project, um, my creative project that I'm doing and will present here in the, um, in the parks. Um, it's called A Wicked Silence, and we'll talk a little bit th about that later. But, um, but I knew when I started thinking about this project a few years ago that I would always need a dramaturg as a part of it. And I didn't really know why. Uh -huh. It was just sort of instinct. <laughs> and so as I started working in the project and as it started to become more realized, um, as this partnership um, came together and as funding started to come in, um, I was really excited that I could go forward and that you joined the project. Um, so as I was sort of learning about it and hearing about it and doing research, I was like, oh, yeah, this totally makes sense. Um, it totally makes sense why I would need someone to be a part of this. Um, the depth and the research that's involved in this particular art piece is is definitely um, in need of like many kind of checks. And that's what I always thought about it at first is sort of like a checks and balances kind of thing. Someone to kind of bring integrity um, to the work and remind you of like why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. But um, one thing I've, I've discovered is um, how much um, we work together like as researchers, as co-researchers on the project. And it's been so wonderful to not work in a vacuum. A lot of times um, we kind of just are in our own silo and, when, and it just the work just comes out and then yeah. that's, that's it. But it's been really nice to have this collaborative process. Um, um, we, we meet and we talk about the research that we've done. Um, and that's been, that's been really great. So that's sort of the first thing we'll, we'll kind of dive into. We've talked, we, we were kind of asked, I was asked as an artist to think about how can, how can I bring first and second accounts of stories in the subject matter of our piece into this. So we started to kind of do a deep dive on, on, in, in research. And that's sort of how we were beginning our process, which is not how I thought it would be. <laughs> I thought we would jump right into rehearsal because we're we're still rehearsing and things uh -huh. like that. You haven't even come to rehearsal yet, yeah. Which I'm very excited for you to do. But um, but you've been really helpful in shaping how we are rehearsing um, by bringing up these themes and looking at what is coming out of the stories that we're reading, out of the research that we're doing. And that we'll share that a little bit later, um, a little bit of experiments that we've done um, based on that. So let's talk a little bit about why dramaturgy is particularly useful for this project. So as I hinted, our performance project is A Wicked Silence. And this is a project that explores the consequences of the North Carolina eugenics program. Um, I became aware of this program around the time of when I started Joy Movement in 2014 and was astounded by what happened and what it was and how long it was and why it happened in the first place. And that made me start to do research and I wanted to make a piece about it. And I even started kind of workshopping ideas, but I realized then that this was a big project. This was a big issue and definitely deserved funding and time and support in order to really fully um, bring uh, those stories to life in the best way that I could. And so I was really grateful that years later, many years later, <laughs> finally getting to um, produce this work. And, you know, so in the, in the presentation, it sort of evolved and keep on evolving as dance does. Um, try to stay true to what does the art want to do? What does it want to be? I sort of think of myself as sort of the shaper, but it kind of has its own will and its own life. 
And so, um, you know, in this project, we're really looking at, you know, who were the folks who were involved and how are we or connected or disconnected to that experience and sort of what is, um, what do we, what do we want to take away from that? And I'm looking at it in sort of the experiential learning um, model that goes, you know, so what is it? Um, you know, why do we care? Like, so what? And then what's next? Now what? So I've decided to break it up into multi years because it's such a big concept to explore. So the very first project that you'll see um, part of that is the sort of what happened. And that's probably the hardest part, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of storytelling involved and we're going to be using poetry and um, it's going to sort of shape like a choreo play, which is a little different than how we usually present our, our dance work. So a lot of writing involved, a lot of reading. Um, and so we started to sort of, again, revisit who did this happen to, who was a part of this, who were, who, you know, why did it start? All these different questions. Um, so that's sort of how we began. We decided, you know, it's better to start with the research. And let's really let that inform the making of it. Um, so, yeah, I would love for you to talk about, like, what it's been like doing the research or talking with me about it. Yeah. You know? So I think that one of the biggest things that has jumped out over the course of our research together um, is just the fact that so much of what we're reading and engaging with are stories um, that belong to real people that are still alive today and they're... Um, you know, all of this research is rooted in reality. And so there's this question of what is the relationship of the dance to these factual events that happened and how is making a dance about it um, adding to the conversation in such a way that it's not replicating these stories that have already been told, right? You don't need to just take them and put them on something else. Um, that doesn't add to the conversation necessarily. So it's been about identifying themes that we see over and over again um, in firsthand accounts that people are giving of their stories, but also just in reading about historic cases um, that, you know, were in relationship to eugenics or the ways that, um, that people were talked about when they um, oftentimes got signed up by someone else to be part of the eugenics program. So it's, we've had a lot of conversations around like, what are these major themes we're seeing and how do those translate into dance? Where is there space for exploration um, of relationship, like among your dancers that feels relevant to their experiences, right? Like right. what are, what's the thematic material that's rooted that makes sense to explore? Um, so it's interesting, right? Those things are very related, but they're also separate um, just in terms of like the, ex the life experiences, but the themes are very similar. So yeah. I feel like that's been sort of our greatest task is like yes. choosing what parts of this like very dense, heavy <laughs> research uh, makes sense to pull in and what is supplementary. And also just questions about like, um, you know, what's interesting to include in a way that's not dance. So like, can this be represented visually? Can this be, you know, how, how right. can like other elements add to and support the dance while not necessarily needing every bit of our research to be in the dance right. itself. Right. Also, you know, just it's been um, really wonderful to have this experience of being able to have this space to work. Um, you know, part of the residency um, last week, it was like one of those days where I was like, it's going to thunderstorm. And then, it, and then it didn't. And I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, and some of my dancers live. Uh, very far away and they some of them take the train from you know a, another city so I didn't want to have them come and you know us not be able to move but I live pretty close so I just came and I took I found another book and 
was reading the digital version. Uh -huh. I checked it out from the library digitally. And and it was so wonderful to kind of like sit and read and pull out all this information and connect it to what we've already found in the space that we, you know, will eventually realize where this will be. Yeah. Right. So it's just been, um, you know, I mean, I guess I'm a bit nerdy, you know, <laughs> I'm okay with that. But it's been really pleasurable to just kind of do that, take that time. It's time that we don't normally, I don't normally get, I don't normally get nine months to yeah. <laughs> make something. It's a lot of times like, okay, the show's next week. Here we go, you know? <laughs> and so taking my time and really like fully um, bringing everything that I can, you know, to this project has been a really wonderful experience. And I'm, I'm very thankful, um, you know, to be able to do that. I think I'd like to share a little bit about sort of some of the themes and kind of share with you all how that's starting to take shape. Um, so the dancers are going to share a little bit um, of a score, sort of a, a sort of improvisational um, plan, right? <laughs> or um, uh, sort of um, a map of some ideas that we've been exploring. So some of the material is things that they have taken time and kind of set and rehearsed a lot. And then some of the material is something that is an idea and that they'll in the space, in the moment with each other kind of respond to in that way. So some of the things that I look for when I watch dance are um, the, I guess, like relationships that I um, feel or sense between dancers. And so we just saw something that was between two people. So it's a little bit easier to, um, to zero in on that relationship versus like if it's a trio or a quartet or there are many bodies on stage. Um, I think that, yeah, one of the things that I always sort of zoom in on early on when I'm watching dance is like what my, what the perceived relationship is between dancers. Um, I like to think about like what that dynamic is. Is there like a power dynamic at play? Is somebody um, responding more to one, one, another dancer or vice versa? Um, and you know, I think about like why things happen or why things change. Um, that's a that's a big question I always have, like when I create dance and also when I watch dance. Like, 
did the music change? Did the lighting change? Like what is motivating a dynamic shift uh, in the choreography that we're seeing? Um, so, and yeah, and then I, I also think about if there is gestural work, which in what we just saw, there definitely was, um, I guess like what that references for me or what that brings up for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I have an unfair advantage in knowing where some of these things come from, but in the first part of that, I definitely saw like a domestic sort of setting. I think that there was a lot of like sweeping of curtains or tablecloths or this, this sort of gesture made me think about like making sandwiches. Um, and there was obviously sort of a, a power dynamic of like, or, or not necessarily a power dynamic, but just like a role, so a, a clear sense of role of the dancers where the dancer in front is working on a task and the other dancer is sort of disrupting that. And just like the, the reaction and repetition of, um, of that, I think you can sort of see the building of like annoyance or frustration. Um, which I think also then is interesting when the chairs get involved of like continuing of, of modeling behavior and the, the other dancer of not, um, not responding and just sort of these elaborate, like eye rolls that like ripple through the body, <laughs> um, the struck me as very funny, um, just because I have certainly, you know, I think that that's a very relatable, um, feeling and to see it exaggerated in such a way um just like really tickled me <laughs> when I was watching that um yeah so I, I I guess like the relationship dynamic that I projected was sisterly that it was like definitely uh like not disciplinary necessarily um so not like a parental role but something where maybe someone was the older sister and knew a little better or was trying to model good behavior for the younger sister or sibling. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's been interesting this process because I typically utilize a lot of abstract movement, uh -huh. um, that sort of layers on maybe something that's in sort of, a narrative idea or text or something like that. And so I've been trying to shift and approach this in a different way. Um, even in the movement, trying to find a way to have that more connected and kind of, I don't know, earthly yeah. <laughs> in terms of sort of what we see. Um, and so I've been playing in a different way and it's been, and, and so it's, it's turning out quite differently than like my normal work, yeah. but I'm really, I really have enjoyed the process, especially the sort of more, um, narrative sort of improv exploration, yeah. um, with them. And so we're continuing to work this way as a way of developing. So you may not see that in the final, you know, version, but it's sort of, gets us going and gets us moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, their voices and their experiences involved have, have been really um, critical to the process. You know, it's, I think the biggest thing that like I think about when I think about eugenics and I think about North Carolina's relationship to it, I think about the sort of dehumanization of people and my goal in this project is to, um, you know, reclaim that humanity and reclaim that, you know, um, sort of feeling tied in and connected to people and seeing people as people and yeah. not um, and not disconnected. And how do we when we see, um, you know, our fellow folks, you know, as a person connected to us, how does that shift? what we allow to happen or not, right? And so, um, so it's, been, it's been wonderful pulling in some sort of, uh, some of the ideas about, we like, talked about like, what does it mean to have manners? Or <laughs> what does it mean to like, um, you know, what does it mean to be a kid? Or what does it mean, you know, all these questions, what does that look like? What does that feel like? That's been pulled up 
from the research and kind of pulling that in and trying to make those connections. Yeah. Hi, my name is Alexandra and I'm currently an apprentice with Joy Movement. Um, so far, I've really enjoyed working with the company and working with Alex and exploring the parks. Um, we've been working in three different areas of the park. At first, we were exploring different structures within the park, um, the different like mural paintings on the ground. I really enjoyed working with that. Um, and then we've also explored different themes. Um, we've kind of been given prompts at the beginning of each rehearsal and worked um, with those and then putting things together with that. Hi, I'm Hannah. I am a current company member with Joy Movement and I think what I've most enjoyed about this process and about working in the parks is well getting to know my fellow dancers and movers and how we kind of all exist in the space together. Um, we focused a lot on structure, architectural structure, and just sh structure of bodies and, and space. Um, so I've really enjoyed working with different things like this. We've been playing with this sculpture and um, this garden. And I don't know, it's just been really interesting to inform the movement. Uh, another part of the process that I've enjoyed is just thinking of the park as like a sound score and letting the noises that you hear all day in the park um, inform your choices and how you react or choose to not react to those noises. Um, so that's what I really enjoyed about this process and how it's been different from things that I've done in the past. Because um, when you're in a studio, then you don't have those sort sorts of noises or those sorts of structures to inform your movement choices. Um, but out in a space, on a site, um, it really lets you create something unique that can't exist somewhere else. So to wrap up today, I'll just talk a little bit about what it's been like being in the park space and how it's been informing the work. Um, this is, I've done, a, I've done site specific work before, but this is a really unique experience in that in terms of land, Right, in terms of acreage, this is the biggest kind of space that I've ever had to um, consider when creating. Um, and I'm trying to let it, I'm trying not to make too many hard decisions early in the process and kind of let it evolve. So as the piece is developing and as we get more comfortable with the space, um, it starts to become clear where things may belong. Um, what one thing I would say is another thing that is always really exciting is that the park is in a live space. We don't have any, well, we do have some animals. We have dogs, a dog park, but we don't, you know, we have a lot of people, a lot of different kinds of people coming through every week. Um, and they're either, you know, having fun in the playground or skating or playing football or, you know, whatever they may be doing. And we try not to like pretend as though they don't exist, right? And that's like what Hannah mentioned, like being in a studio is so different. So the way that people are being in the space has some kind of effect on us as well. And we didn't really know what that'll be like because that's a really new concept for us. Um, but I'm really excited about seeing how it kind of uh, layers into the work. Um, one of the ways I like to work is when I'm thinking about music, when I'm normally in a studio, um, and I always experience this uh, <laughs> with other projects that I've worked on, I like to kind of layer different sounds and, and even though that might not be what it is performed to, it kind of uh, infuses itself into the work itself. Um, and so even when that sound maybe is shifted, that still under layer is there. It's like a, a, a hidden layer. And I think that that's maybe how the park will continue to be that the way the people, the sounds, I think that will definitely be embedded into the work as it is being made. But I'm still exploring how each of these spaces are, are going to be uh, explored. I don't really know yet how the audience will move through it, how the work itself will move through, but the goal is definitely 
not to be in one space on the stage, but to kind of uh, explore and perform throughout. So it's going to be a fun and difficult adventure <laughs> kind of figuring that out as we go. But I'm really excited to have this opportunity to take the time to, um, to, to explore that as I'm creating it.